Hey, Billy Glisson with Power Core 360, and today I'm on a roll. I'm upset. I'm all fired up. I'm going to have to tell you right now, though, I'm going to promise you, if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can download a free volleyball training plan that I designed. Why am I all fired up? Well, we're going to talk about the two worst ways to condition volleyball players. I'm going to tell you this, the last four months with COVID-19, we've been training athletes online, a lot of, all, a lot of volleyball athletes who are really dedicated They've been working on their strength, their explosive strength, to jump higher, hit harder, and play volleyball at a much higher level. I'm fired up because a lot of them have been freaking out in the last month because as we started into July training, their coaches are talking to them about, you know, in a month, you're gonna to have to go out and run the mile. And we're talking to them saying, run the mile, what does the mile have to do with volleyball training? And the answer is not very much. So let's jump into the number one worst thing you can do to train a volleyball player. All right, so let's talk about why is the mile so bad? Well, first and foremost, it's a cyclic activity. What does that mean? It means it's the same movement in the same direction with the same muscles going over and over and over. And because most athletes who run a mile, unless that's what their event is, they're not very fast at it. So the pace that they can run at is very slow. Same direction, same muscles to move the body forwards. And in volleyball, remember that volleyball is a a game that's played in different directions. We're jumping, we're landing, we're digging, we're hitting, we're changing directions, all very fast, high intensity, quick, explosive movements. So when we go out and we train something like the mile that is slow, guess what we're training to do? We're training to build endurance in running using the same muscle, same movements over and over and over in the same direction. You are training to be slow. It is also using what we're gonna talk about as the wrong energy system, and we'll get into that later. What I'm really fired up about is yesterday, one of the athletes that we've been working with for three or four months got injured. They got injured going to a preseason high school volleyball training program, right? Where whoever decided to um, design the program, designed it, it would be a really good idea to do maximum speed, maximum sprints, 400 meters, 300 meters, 200 meters, and God knows what else they did. The reality is, are you serious? That's what you did? Athletes who have a lot of athletes for probably the last three or four months of COVID-19 have been doing nothing. They've been housebound, can't get out of the house. Some of them have been training with us online, right? But the reality is whether they've been training online or not, to go out and run 400, 300, 200 meter max sprints on the first day is just ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Well, if we think of it about volleyball once again, sprinting, even at a 400, 300, 200 meter, it's high intensity. Volleyball is high intensity. But the problem is with 400 meters, it's 400 meters, 300 meters, 200 meters, same direction, same muscles that propel the body forwards, right? And for, for any type of an athlete that's been on the court that's not running probably further than five feet, five yards in the same direction before they change direction, they're not using, they're not used to using those muscles over and over and over in the same direction, right? The intensity is way too high for them. It's too long in the same direction. Um, and it is, once again, it's in one direction instead of being in a change of direction the way volleyball would be played. The injury risk, and this athlete yesterday felt something in her hip pop. Uh, I wonder why. Just, once again, ridiculous that they're doing this. The injury risk, when you take an athlete that's been doing slower speed movements, movements for two or three jumps in a row, two or three movements in a row, now we're asking them to do the same high-speed movements for a minute, minute and a half, whatever it takes them to run a 400 meter or faster. It's just crazy what they're doing. Once again, it's the wrong energy system. There's a consistent theme that happens with both of these activities, right? Running a mile, long and slow, or going out and running sprints that are too long and the athletes aren't ready for it. It's consistently bad because it's the wrong movements. It's slow. It's cyclic. It's in the same direction. There's no focus on stopping, changing directions, jumping, landing being explosive. It's using the wrong muscles and it's using the wrong energy systems. Volleyball is what we call a power speed sport. It is not an endurance sport. It is about developing power and speed and we'll talk about why. We're going to get into, we're going to break down this volleyball and we're talking about high level comp competitive volleyball here. We're not talking about with your family on Sunday after church. We're talking about competitive, let's get after it, let's win volleyball. This is science. This is nothing that I'm making up. It's not my opinion. It's purely the science. 
And I encourage you coaches go out and Google it, read about it. The science is out there. All right, why do we say that volleyball, competitive volleyball is a power speed sport? Well, first of all, break down high school volleyball. And what you're gonna find out if you time consistently a match, the average amount of time that the rally lasts is 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds, right? So guess what? When you're training your athletes and you're trying to make them better volleyball players, we ought to be training them for less than 10 seconds. High intensity, but less than 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, just like a match, there's recovery. I'm gonna skip ahead here for just a second. The average, average recovery for a high school volleyball rally between points is about 15 seconds. So we're going hard for 10 seconds, and then we're, we're, we are recovering for 15 seconds, right? And that's what a match is. It's those bouts of 10 seconds, high intensity, and then 15 seconds recovery over and over and over again. That's what makes up a match. The other real key thing is that there are many different movements, right? We're jumping, we're landing, we're digging, we're rolling, we're attacking. We're doing all these quick movements and very seldomly do we ever do two movements in a row. Maybe if you're on the net and you're actually blocking twice in a row, that would be the only time you'd probably do two of the same movements over and over and over using the same muscles, right? Otherwise, it's all just random movements, volleyball movements that are going in different directions, high intensity for less than 10 seconds. So with that being said, we've talked about energy systems. Let's get into some of the science, right? So energy systems, there's three energy systems in the human body. Energy just meaning we get our energy from the foods that we eat, but how the body can get and use the energy, we need to know that because our training plan, how we train those athletes need to be based, needs to be based on the energy system we're using in the sport of volleyball in this case. Three energy systems. The first one is the aerobic energy system. A little more technical term, sorry about this, but this is the science, we call it the oxidative, sense of, o oxidative system. Oxidative just means we're using oxygen. The intensity of the movement is low enough that the body has time to breathe in the oxygen through the air, through the lungs, get it in the blood system, and get it to the exercising muscles. And because it takes a little bit longer to get there, but the intensity is low enough to get oxygen there, we can break down one of three fuel sources, right? We have fat, carbohydrate, and protein. If we have oxygen in sufficient amounts, and we, then we can actually break down fat as an energy system. And it really, if we think of it in terms of time, it means that we're doing the same activity, cyclic activity, same motion over and over, like running, cycling, rowing, cross-country skiing. If we can do that at an intensity, an intensity that the athlete can do it for at least two minutes consistently in a row, then we'll probably be using oxygen to break down fat as our fuel, right? But that's not high intensity volleyball, which is, guess what? Less than 10 seconds as we already talked about. Second energy system is called glycolytic. Really what that means is we're using glycogen. Glycogen is the storage form of sugar or carbohydrate in the body. It's stored in the liver and it's stored in the exercising muscles that we've actually trained. When we're doing this using the glycolytic or we're breaking down glycogen, it really, if we look in terms of time, that's really the key determinant here. The activity lasts from 10 seconds to two minutes. So if you go, if you're out there running or doing any activity and you go at an intensity that you can't keep it up for two minutes because you're going harder, you're actually gonna use a different energy system. You're gonna break down sugar because your body doesn't have enough oxygen to break down fat. So we need a little bit of a type of an energy, carbohydrate, glycogen, if you would, or sugar. The intensity is so high, we've actually gotta break it down a little bit faster. So we have to use a different energy system. Great, okay? Let's now get down to what we call the ATP-CP. That stands for adenosine, triphosphate, creatine phosphate, energy system. What you need to think about it in simple terms is it's the immediate energy system that we use for high intensity activity, explosive movements that are, uh, that are, um, ha that are happening in less than 10 seconds. Guess what that is? That's competitive volleyball. So if we were training a volleyball athlete, really what we want to fo focus on is this energy system, because we don't have time when we're doing an explosive jump, an attack, a dig, or anything like that. We don't have time to deliver oxygen, break down fat. We don't have time to break down sugar in the muscle. We have to use this, this energy source that's right there in the muscle. It's right there, right now, ready to go to do a high intensity jump, dig, attack, whatever it might be in the volleyball movement explosively. And once again, it's gonna be done, completed in 10 seconds. That's volleyball. 
So if we're going to train a volleyball athlete to be good at volleyball, we need to focus on the right movements and the right energy system for that athlete can actually get better at explosive volleyball movements. All right, so if I was telling you what you need to do to condition a volleyball athlete, first of all, I'm gonna tell you it needs to be high intensity volleyball movements that last 10 seconds or less, and we're gonna call this a work bout, right? And in between the 10 second work bouts, we're gonna take 15 to 30 seconds to recover, right? And so once again, just like a match, it is over and over 10 seconds work, 10 second rally. Then after that, we get 15 seconds to recover, that's volleyball. So that's what we're trying to do is build our training program to go high intensity for 10 seconds, volleyball type movements, and then give us 15 to 30 seconds recovery, and then repeat that and repeat numerous bouts of that, right? Over and over and over again in our training session. When we're building what we call an event, an event would be like a three or four day qualifier or national tournaments, JOs or AUs or something like that, right? That's an event. And so you're probably saying earlier when I said volleyball is not an endurance event. It's not an endurance event based on energy system. But it does, uh, we are going to have to go out and play those different 10 second points over and over and over in our match and in our wave and our three or four day qualifier, whatever the deal is, we're going to have to have a different type of an endurance. We're going to have to have endurance in the ATP CP energy system to be able to do many, many bouts of high intensity 10 second points, 10 second activities, and then recover. Well, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to repeat bouts of 10 second work to 15 to 30 second recovery, right? And if we do that in volleyball movements, guess what? Very quickly, the body, the nervous system, all the things that need to make a volleyball athlete perform volleyball movements quickly, effectively, and explosively, we're going to train that. And very quickly, they're going to start getting better at that. Once again, it needs to be, we need to talk about what we call movement specificity. In other words, training is very specific. If I go in the weight room and I do bicep curls, the muscles I'm using to perform that movement, I'm going to get better at. I'm going to get stronger at, right? If I want to be a weightlifter and lift bice and do bicep curls, then I'm going to go in the weight room and do that movement. That's what I'm going to get better at doing, stronger at doing. And if I do it faster with more load, I might get explosive at that. If I go out and I run the mile, I'm going to get better at running the mile using that energy system and that speed in one direction. Same thing, if I go out and I want to be good at a 400, 300, or 200 meter sprint, then that's what I'll do. But my body's being trained to do that. My muscles are being trained to do that. In volleyball, it's about jumping, landing, changing direction, blocking, digging, rolling, accelerating, decelerating. If you want to get better at training your volleyball athletes, then train them in the movements of the sport with the right energy system and make it high intensity and give them recovery bouts in between. If you're interested in getting a free training plan, the information will be down below in the description. If you're interested in further information about what we do at PowerCore 360, if you're interested in hiring us to come out and develop a training program, train your athletes, or train you as a coach, please let us know. Further information can be found at PowerCore360.com.